What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to be looking at the Thermalrite Frozen Warframe 360 Black ARGB AIO Liquid Cooler. The first thing you'll notice about Thermalrite is they always have this little authenticating tag on it. You scratch it, then it's going to give you a number or code and that's going to allow you to verify whether or not it is an authentic Thermalrite product. Very nice AIO, as you can see, you've got ARGB fans and you've also got a display screen as well. And it's going to allow you to monitor different stats for your PC. So let's get straight into this. We're going to uh, open this up, have a look at it quickly, and then we'll install it onto a bench testing PC. Let's see how it holds up against something like a 12900KS, which is a pretty hot CPU. It's pretty much in line with 14th gen, 13th gen. All right, so let's see what in the box you get. Your little user manual here tells you how to install it. We won't need that. We should be able to figure this out. And as always, in thermal right fashion, they've already installed the fans for you. So if you're going to install this on the top, it's already got the fans installed. Whether you're going to want it that way or the other way, it's just a matter of flipping around your fan so that your cables come out onto the back so that you're able to route your cables easily without seeing them. You've got one PWM connector here which controls your pump. For your AIO, your little magnetic screen here comes off, so that's pretty cool as well. You can put it any way you want, depending on how you install it. You've got a Type-C cable that plugs into it, and that's obviously going to power your display screen. And it just comes on and off just like that. So this is ready to be installed. Um, it's just a matter of which mount you're going to use. Right. This is able to be installed on your typical motherboards. LGA 1700, 1151, 1200, AM4, AM5. In this case, we're installing it onto a 1700 motherboard. So we are going to need this mounting bracket, which is for 1700. We're going to need the 1700 stands, our mounting brackets, 1700. They've also given you some thermal paste. And of course, our mounting hardware. That's for AM4, we won't need that. That's everything we're going to need. We have our thumb screws here to secure it our screws to mount the radiator to the case. I'm just going to show you how you install it onto the motherboard because that's what's most important. Let's take this off as we're not going to need that. And here is the 9 pin to USB Type-C which is going to allow you to control the display screen to display whatever you need. Here is my little bench test. We are only going to need the motherboard so that we can install the components. And let's just grab the motherboard itself. Obviously install your CPU. Now let's install everything because this is just a test. I'm not going to peel this off because I will peel it off when I decide to install it on whichever build. But you would peel these off and that's great because it helps to hold this mounting bracket in place as you install it. So you can see here it says 1700 there. So you need to pull everything out to the furthest point and that's going to be your 1700. Now turn this around and we'll place our mounting bracket right on just like that. Now if you peel it off, if you peel off the adhesive, you stick it on, that won't move. Make sure that it is going to stay in place, which it does because the motherboard's down anyway. What you need to do now is put on your stands. Doesn't matter which way you put it on as long as you get them on. All right, here we put our mounting bracket and then grab your thumb screws and screw this down. And that's it. That's all there really is to this install. They've made this so easy to install. It really isn't that hard at all to figure out. And because I've used a lot of Thermalrite products, I'm pretty familiar with the way Thermalrite is installed. We'll just screw this down, all sides. You do want to make sure that it is nice and snug. Go hand tight until it stops and you're good. Before you go any further, make sure that it is lining up. Do a quick test fit, make sure that they do line up with your screws. All right, so they do line up, so that is great. Put on some thermal paste, and of course, never ever forget to peel off the protective layer on the bottom of your pump. We we'll just lay this down to install it now. Line up our screw holes, top and bottom, like that. Grab our screwdriver, and let's install this. Just little by little till it stops. We'll reattach LCD screen because it is detachable. That's great. Okay. And then we plug in our pump, plug it into CPU option, and the fans 
that we have daisy chained. I've plugged this fan into this fan, this fan into this fan, and now I'll plug it into our CPU fan number one. And I've done the same thing for the 5 volt 3 pin. Plug this fan to this, this to this, and now we'll plug it into our 5 volt 3 pin port. Just like that. Plug in our power, our boot drive, here's my testing drive. I'll plug that into my SATA port here. CPU power, ATX, and now our monitor. I'm going to use a little graphics card because we're just going to test the CPU and how hot it gets. All right, now we'll plug in the HDMI cable for the GPU. We have a power button right here. In order to have our LCD screen work, we must plug in our nine pin USB 2.0 down the bottom here. We plug it in and then we plug it into the Type-C port. Make sure you have all your components installed. All right, now with everything ready, you can now turn on the PC. We'll quickly run a Cinebench test to see the, what the temperatures are like. So I'm white at the moment, and we should have a boot logo for the screen as well. And there we are. That is the Thermalright logo. Next, we'll go into the Thermalright website and we will download software. We're going to go to the Thermalright website, thermalright.com, go to support, download, and then install software by double clicking setup.exec. The fans are pretty strong at the moment. Uh, you can control that. First off, let's just get the software. Let's go to Thermalright. Thermalright. We go to support, download. We should click on English version, download. And now it's going to download. Remember, you got to download the version you have. So they've got another version here called Frozen Vision. I do have that. We'll do another video on that so you guys can see what that LCD display looks like. Now that it's downloaded, let's open it up. Extract files because it is a zip file. Extract all, double click. And this is the setup. We'll now set it up, install, next, next, install, finish, it should be on our desktop now, there it is right there, TRCC, run as administrator, yes, right guys, so here is our basic little setup, this is our little bench test, we have our AIO here, and we're just going to leave it here so you guys can also see the temps, for the programs I will be using, I do have Cinebench R23 running and we're going to use that to do a multi-core and a single core benchmark and it should give us a rough idea of how it performs and here you can see CPU temp and GPU temp and it also shows it right here so let's choose something where you can see it clearly there we go that's a whole lot more visible we really only care about cpu temp because we're doing a cpu benchmark i've also got hardware info open as well on sensors so we can also see all the sensors for hardware info and i've also got msi afterburner cpu i9 12900ks we have core temperatures here and we have current temps minimum temp, maximum temp, and average temp. And it is pretty close according to the temperatures that you see now. Here you've got CPU temperature here as well. So minimum 23, maximum 68. And the actual temperature is right here, which is on 27 right now, which is close to 28 here. So the sensors are just about right. That's good. We'll start Cinebench now on single core and let's see how this cooler holds up. Okay, so we have Cinebench running now. Straight away, our temperature does jump up. So far, so good. For single core performance, it is staying about that 60 degree mark. So that's really, really good. That's what we want to see. This is a 12900KS. So it is a very hot CPU. Very similar to 13th gen and 14th gen. Bear that in mind when you see these temperatures. With your CPU under full maximum load, with an air cooler, you should see temperatures almost hitting about 90 degrees Celsius. On a liquid cooler, if you can keep it at 70 degrees and below, that is fantastic and that's what we're aiming for here. That's what I look for when I look for a decent AIO. 
if it can do that then i know that i've got a decent cpu cooler so i'm just going to leave this running for a little bit and uh let's see the final results so really i haven't seen this go over 60 degrees at all and that's fantastic i was really expecting this to hit at about that 70 to 80 degrees but the fact that it's keeping it under 70 degrees is a very good sign and uh, something to look forward to so right now i did see it hit just 70 degrees right there we are still running cinebench of course it doesn't seem to be going over about 65 degrees and it steadily sits at about 55 to 60. And i'm pretty happy with the performance thus far even if you look at the graph here it basically sits at about that 60 degree mark and it keeps it pretty consistent all the way through the maximum i've seen it hit is now about 75 degrees so that is fantastic now the longer you run it the hotter it will get because it is under a lot more stress Our score is the light orange and a similar identical system is the dark orange. Right now we're in the lead. Right, so as you can see, it has stopped and we did get the top score. The closest identical system got 1926, we got 1963. That's simply due to having a very good CPU cooler. So now we're going to go to our multi-core performance and we will run that for 10 minutes and see how we go. Now multi-core uses all the cores so it will do a lot more stress however if we are able to keep it at about that 90 degrees 95 degree mark when you're under full load with multi-core it is normal to see it hit at about that 90 to 100 degree mark they do say that the i9 12900k's 13900k's and 14900k's can run up to 100 degrees without issue but the cooler it is the better so if i see this hit no more than 95 degrees i'm going to be pretty happy with that already we can hear the fans spinning a lot harder now because the cpu is under max load and the fans are connected to the cpu fan one header when the cpu gets hotter the fans will spin a bit harder All right, so you can see our temperature has completely dropped. So that means that it has finished benchmarking and rendering. So now we'll go back into it. Here we are, and we can see that our score is second. And that is pretty good. Very happy with the results. And it would seem that our max was 96 degrees. Now it wasn't 96 degrees all the time. That was just the max that it hit. All in all, it is a very decent AIO liquid cooler and uh, definitely the best bang for your buck in my personal opinion. Here in Australia, it only sells for $150 and usually at $150, you are not going to get the features that Thermal Right AIO offers. Let me show you guys how the software works and what you're able to do. It actually is quite amazing when you look at it. And you gotta love the fact that you can just pull this off and put it anywhere you want. Now we can just focus on the LCD display itself and the software. Right, so now you can see that whatever is displayed onto your LCD screen will also be displayed onto this screen right here. It's just a really bad angle, but you guys can pretty much see that right there. So these are the preset themes that they give you. You've got all your themes, you've got default themes, and then you've got your own theme. So this is a theme that I designed myself using one of theirs. I just changed the background. It is very customizable, so that is fantastic. Now we do know that this is detachable and you can rotate it any way you want because it is a perfect square. However, if you want the Thermal Right logo upright, then you are able to rotate the display using a, the different angles so if I go 270 so you can see there it's vertical now but it doesn't look as nice because it wasn't designed that way as you can see so if your display happens to be sitting this way that's the way it would look and you can even go 180 where it flips upside down so if for any reason this is flipped upside down then you can do that as well unit you can go from celsius to fahrenheit that's great we have two tabs here right this is the tab for your screen and this is the customizing 
tab where you can enter your own text and it will display onto your screen. For instance, I could put Mikey's Vlogs right there and then I could display it by typing yes and Mikey's Vlogs would be displayed like so. You would have to change the size of the text. Choose the appropriate size, press OK and it would change size. Now we can go across and center it. You can choose your date and time if you want 12 hour, 24 hour, how you want your date to be displayed or you can just have day and month or month and date year month date etc and customize the color you want it to display as well as the font that you want it to be displayed as well you see how the date now disappears because you can turn that off if you don't need the date displayed or if you don't want the time displayed, you can turn all that off. You could have just the temperatures displayed as well as your custom logo. And you can choose whichever background you want. Here you can choose an image. This image here, I could use that, MSI mag. And then you can still put your custom text, date and time, add it all back on like so. And it will all display just like that. You can even choose your customized GIF, GIF, whichever you want to call it, whichever one you want it to display, and that's it. Now, you can also use a decorative layer, all right, which is just another JPEG or PNG file, and that would layer onto it. Also, say for instance, you wanted to project a certain part of the screen, you're able to do that by clicking on this here, and it will show onto this screen right here and that is how you use screen projection you turn it on you drag the box where you want and it will display as your background another thing also with the display screen is you're able to display a total of six you can see you've got m1 m2 m3 m4 each one of these are sensors if you select them in system info here you're able to have it display all this information now you can either have it rotate or tile it on I'm going to get rid of the customized text at the moment so you don't see it we'll also remove date and time and all we're going to see are these sensors that we display you click on it and you can choose what you wanted to display so say for instance i want this to be gpu memory clock now we've got cpu temp we've got CPU clock, speed CPU usage, GPU temp, GPU clock and GPU usage. That makes a lot of sense because those are very important information that you would like to see. It is always going to show this until you decide differently. So now we will choose it as rotate and it should keep rotating and displaying different ones as we progress. It's going to switch through each individual one. Okay, so let's move this over to the middle and now it's going to rotate through each one of these sensors and that's what you're going to be able to see every time. It's pretty cool. Or you can just simply tile it all on like that. And even here, you can move it over. You can drag it to exactly where you want it. That way you can customize it to look how you want. Make it as symmetrical as possible. Center it as best you can. And that way, when you do enter a background, it looks really good. Good. You can also change the color. Say we want all that to be in a, another color. We can do that. We choose blue, click OK and look at that. You say you want M2 to be purple. You can do that and then click OK and then that will be purple now. M3, you want that to be say red. It is so customizable and it looks fantastic. It really does. If it only had the presets that they have here, yes, it would look really nice. It's just great to know that you are able to customize it. These are one of the preset modes that they have supplied and it gives you the date, the day, the time, but you can always change that. You can choose 12 hour time here. You can go day, month, year. You can also change the writing to what you want as well. Simply save it here under a name you want. I'm gonna save it as number one, and then you will see it here as one. When you go here, you'll see one here. That's the preset one, and that's the one you just created. This is a good software, it gives you the ability to completely customize it and that's really what you want. You don't want it to just have a standard display. I always want to be able to customize it because what if it doesn't match your whole theme of your PC? Say it displays blue but your entire PC is white or your entire PC theme is black and red. It's really not going to suit it. Although it will look okay, it doesn't exactly complement your PC build. So having the ability to customize is really going to complement your entire PC, making it that much more worthwhile, bringing your PC to the next level. Every single preset theme that they have already loaded onto this AIO software. 
And honestly, even one of the preloaded looks really nice. I mean, it really is just about personal taste and how you want yours to look. But remember that because it is so customizable, you really can do so much with this LCD screen. And that really brings us to the end of the video. And I really hope you found it helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. Bye for now, guys.